Welcome to Family Matters, a show where we talk about issues of interest to families with young children. I'm Chloe Leary. I'm the director of the Winston Prouty Center. And today I'm very happy to have two guests with me. It's always more fun with two. I have uh, Emily Waite and Nancy Weiss. Nancy is the uh, director of the Wyndham Regional Career Center. And Emily is a teacher at Horizon Early Learning Program here in Brattleboro. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming aboard. Um, and I, our topic today is a little bit different uh, in terms of it's not necessarily about children directly. Um, we are going to be talking about the Early Childhood Program at the Wyndham Regional Career Center, or as we hope it will be. Um, so, and we're fortunate to have somebody who went through it a couple years ago. So we have the whole sort of span of what we're going to talk about in terms of how, did, how do you get into early childhood and be a teacher. So um, I'm so glad to have you both here. Why don't we start with um, a little bit of history. So the Career Center um, had an early childhood program when, when, like for years, I assume. There, it had been there for a number of years. Um, the teacher at the time was Linda Quay. Um, she is outstanding. She's now our co-op coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, so she's still with the center. But as she was retiring, they somehow made the decision not to continue the program. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure how that happened. Mm -hmm rather stunned that uh -huh, it happened uh -huh. given the state of child care in Vermont mm -hmm. um, and decided that and so when I came on board this summer I had been there for a year as the special needs coordinator mm -hmm. and when I came on board as the interim director I thought you know this really makes no sense mm -hmm. we have the perfect setup mm -hmm. um, so I tasked Tom Yon who works for the Career Center and for the Collegian High School with the idea of how do we restart early mm -hmm. childhood ed mm -hmm. and he took the bull by the horns and went and saw you guys at the Winston Prouty Center who you guys had already um, mm -hmm. done a presentation to our advisory board and Great. I said let's just go for it yeah. because it we need it and um, I know that parents struggle with the mm -hmm. idea of where am I going to find a child care placement? Mm -hmm. and, um, and just finding a placement isn't good enough. It's got to be high quality, mm -hmm. highly trained mm -hmm. staff. Um, and it's really important to me that there be a continuum of services. Mm -hmm. um, and I want as much of it as possible to be dual enrollment so mm -hmm. that when somebody graduates from high school, they take enough credits with them mm -hmm. that it reduces their debt as mm -hmm. they come out of college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's not just little kids, it's big kids too. <laughs> right. We don't want to saddle our big kids with a lot right. of debt. Right. So the early childhood program existed. It went away mm -hmm. for, it'll be two years now, right? two years. This is the yes. second year, and our hope is that we're rebooting we, for the fall. We're rebooting in the fall, hopefully yep. with um, at least three courses, maybe four. Mm -hmm. um, some of that will include, some of that time will also be um, out, uh, doing some, I hate to use the word internships because we're not quite to internships yep. yet, but we'll be doing some visits, we'll be doing some volunteer work in centers so that, um, you, so that people get their feet wet with small children. Because um, anybody who's a new parent knows that um, you have to be prepared for anything, and mm -hmm. it's really important mm -hmm. to make sure that we balance that mm -hmm. right. need with um, a knowledge that, yes, I really do like little kids. It's right. not just that they're cute as I pass right. them on the sidewalk. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, yes. So. Right, a lot of people, I think, um, think, oh, well, at least I can work with kids, but right. can they really? So that's great. Right. So, Emily, you did the early childhood pathway at yes. the high school. Tell us, when did you graduate? So I graduated in June of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I was in Linda Quay's program since my sophomore year of high school, and I just, I loved it. And um, as you mentioned, I was able to take part in the co-op experience. Uh -huh. um, and before Horizon became Horizon, it was Brattleboro Nursery School. Right. Uh -huh. And so I started there for my first co-op. 
um, and I just I fell in love with it mm. and so I wanted to stay there and mm. we found out that it was switching from Brattleboro Nursery over to Horizon mm -hmm. Early Learning mm -hmm. so the following year until my senior year I stayed with Horizon volunteering um, I started out once a week going there mm -hmm. and then it bumped up to two days a week and I just absolutely fell in love with it mm -hmm. so did you know that you <coughs> always wanted to be a teacher with little kids so I always have known that I've wanted to be a teacher since I was very, very young. Um, I have two younger siblings and I really enjoyed um, like playing school with them mm -hmm. and being their teacher and helping them throughout their school career. Uh -huh. So yeah, I've always known. Did you, so just um, as um, Nancy pointed out, sometimes people um, don't necessarily know. When you actually got mm -hmm. into the classes and into the co-op program, was there anything that surprised you or that you were sort of like, Hmm, I didn't know it would be this way. <laughs> there were lots of diapers, which <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> I kind of went into it just, oh, you know, it's going to be playing with kids, getting on uh -huh. the ground, and um, it's a lot of that, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of other pieces mm -hmm. that go mm -hmm. interconnected with that, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. So really important, I think, to get that hands-on experience. Yes, and sort of oh, know what for you're getting sure. Into. For sure. Definitely. It was a great experience. Uh -huh. Um, so what classes, uh, I think what's um, interesting to me is that it, it was a program for a long time, a couple years hiatus, reboot, means does that make it a little easier to start up and will it look similar to what Emily experienced? or what It will think? look similar. We'll start by offering um, a course that's called Foundations and it will be kind of an overview of early childhood mm -hmm. education. Um, just to give people kind of that smattering of everything and knowing, you know, is this something I'm really interested in? Mm -hmm. um, then we'll offer um, early childhood development. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh boy, if you hadn't asked me, I would have been able to tell you which of the two it's other classes visit, totally we selected. Fine. Are um, they similar sorry, to they're what very existed similar. previously? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we also, within the Career Center, we already have some courses that will um, help students get their early childhood um, move forward more toward their associate's degree like mm -hmm. nutrition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so students can take nutrition um, we are I hope going to offer a course that we're really excited about as an elective which is movement and we're going to gear that toward our LNA program and mm. our early childhood oh. program and the thought is that because I read articles almost every day in my um, news feed about how people do not have enough core muscle strength, mm -hmm. especially little our youngest mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that with that class we can teach kids how teach our students how to teach their future students mm -hmm. um, to get exercise that mm -hmm. encourages core muscle strength. Mm -hmm. Um, which is really important for sitting in a chair, but also for mm -hmm. handwriting, mm -hmm. game playing, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So um, our hope is that that will be a fun elective for people. Yeah, that's. Um, I think that's an interesting point about when you specialize in something like becoming an early mm -hmm. childhood teacher, it's, it's um, sort of the multidisciplinary aspect of some fields is important mm -hmm. too, like nutrition mm -hmm. or movement. Mm -hmm. Um, just and when you think about what we're doing with our littlest people and helping them be as holistic as possible, that makes a lot of sense. I right. think. Right. Uh, Emily, do you remember classes that were not early childhood per se, but that really have helped you in your career now? Yes, definitely. So um, as you mentioned, I took the nut nutrition class, mm -hmm. um, and I found that very helpful so mm -hmm. far. Mm -hmm. um, I also took a different class with Ms. Nato, mm -hmm. and um, it was a similar co-op experience. I got to go into Green Street School and do some work with the kids there. Mm -hmm. um, I also worked with their school counselor closely, mm -hmm. and it was just a great experience to have those connections in the community and mm -hmm. really see what it's like to be inside a public school system. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. One of the pieces that often gets left out of childcare is the idea that um, of after school programs for some mm. of our youngest school age mm. children. Mm. So we'll dovetail a little bit of that into the experience just mm -hmm. so that, um, because we want people to be able to seek employment that's rather diverse. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it might not be that you're ready for a traditional or available for a traditional um, 
preschool job, but mm -hmm. that you might be willing to work after school hours right. or yeah. before school hours mm -hmm. and do that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you do a combination of that. Mm -hmm. So That's a really, you know, I think a lot of people um, think, well, you can be a teacher or that's it. But you bring up right. a great point that early childhood in terms of, I, th I think, doing uh, early early care and education is a, is a launching off point for other careers in early childhood. And so right. whether you get your foot in the door after school for a few hours or end up being a full-time teacher, <laughs> um, sort of how do we, what are some of those career possibilities that you've seen people go into or <laughs> thought about yourself um, that aren't just, you know, that's sort of, sort of a leaping off point for early childhood. Right. Are there, what are some of those? So, um, I was recently at Dartmouth Hitchcock and I met a young woman who was a, oh, good grief, her title was something about um, a care specialist or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she was working in, in the pediatric one day surgical oh, area uh -huh. and she was prepping kids for surgery, but they did all kinds of really neat activities mm. with them before they, um, as they were getting ready mm -hmm. when kids are scared, mm -hmm. but all of those activities were centered around early childhood education mm -hmm. and you know all the way down to what flavor do you want inside your mask for the anesthesiologist mm -hmm. to use and um, letting kids sniff the different smells okay. yeah. and pick the one that was closest to th that they wanted mm -hmm. um, making sure that they knew that one of the kids was having their tonsils out what did you you know what kind of ice do you want when you wake up? <laughs> what flavor ice Aww. do you want? Um, so it's, you know, there are all kinds of, you know, whether you're going to be a teacher or whether you're going to be a um, life coach for little kids mm -hmm. or whether you're going to work as a behavioralist mm -hmm. or any mm -hmm. number of other things or a pediatric nurse, mm -hmm. there are all kinds of mm -hmm. things that fall within that early childhood mm -hmm. realm mm -hmm. that are really important and as you take, if you take those early childhood growth and development classes mm -hmm. and, and those sorts of things, they'll play into that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. role easily of yep. where yes. are we at. It's a foundation for yeah. lots Many of people things. should know, actually. Yeah. Emily, have you thought about other career? I know you're just a couple years <laughs> out and you've got your, you know, a solid position right now, but um, do you ever think about where you might go from, you know, as you look ahead into the future? Sometimes. I think right now I'm, I'm super happy where I'm yeah. at, and Horizon is a great program, and we're still a new program, too, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of teamwork forming, and mm -hmm. we're really starting to get to know each other, and so right now I think I'm just happy where I'm at, and I'm right. happy with the age group that I'm working with, mm -hmm. my what two and three. What age are you working with right now? Two and three. Uh-huh. Tell yes. us a little bit about two and three-year-olds. <laughs> What should everybody know about working with two and three year olds? So, um, if you want to work with two and three year olds, you need to have lots of patience, <laughs> um, lots of empathy. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be willing and able to be on the ground with these kids. Mm -hmm. Twenty, f I mean, as far as as long <laughs> the whole day. Right. <laughs> as long as you have them with you, <laughs> you, have them you will be long. on the ground. <laughs> Um, it's a lot of just play, and but it's not just play. I mean, these kids uh -huh. are learning and developing their social-emotional skills. Mm -hmm. um, they're physically developing. We set up little obstacle courses. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are just so many different areas of growth that these children are working so hard on. And being two and three, their language is still developing. Right. So these kids really need us to help work through all these different domains. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. So... That is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people say just play. Yeah. I mean, you know, and you and you quickly said, and it's not just play, or that play is actually the learning. Right. And so when we think about early childhood, what I remember, everything is learning, right. it, even when you're, even when you are changing a diaper, right? You, mm -hmm. th um, the kids around us, however we're interacting, are learning everything. Like their brains mm -hmm. are developing so quickly right now that right. it's all learning. And we say just play, but it's really you know, uh, it's such a vital time right. that way. Right, for sure. So, um, one of the things that, um, so that, Nancy, you pointed out that um, we had already been talking at Winston Prouty about mm -hmm. the early childhood program and sort of the pipeline and, and how hard it is to hire. I mean, we can't, if we put out an ad for a teacher, we are lucky to get anybody re replying, much less people mm -hmm. who are qualified, which, you know, we'll talk about mm -hmm. that in a little bit, but um, that sort of pipeline of people wanting to be in the field 
So um, we have a child care counts coalition that's a lot of people. Unfortunately, Tom was there to help sort of bring the um, bring that bring the possibility, frankly, of like, wait a minute, maybe there's something we can do here. So that has been really uh, it's remarkable, and I, I'm so appreciative of your willingness to pick up the ball and carry it down the field with us because it is so important. It is so um, important. And one of the things that came up, so there are center-based uh, programs, so like uh, like Winston Prouty or Horizon or Emily, you're, you're working, and then a lot of people have programs in their homes, um, so home-based uh, early educators, and um, this sort of gets back to the multidisciplinary aspect of early childhood. So we were talking about, you brought up like nutrition and movement. We are also, I don't know if you think about, if you ever wanted to start your own business, um, you know, there's a whole other set of skills that you might need. Like that is asking a lot of someone. Do we, right. when you so think about that in the Career Center? We have um, a business program. And mm -hmm. one of the things we have is a course that has been called Marketing Sales and Services, mm -hmm. but, um, it really is business essentials. It's things you need to know if you're going to run your own business mm -hmm. or if you're going to work in business. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also have accounting and accounting too with QuickBooks. Um, we have a personal finance course. All of those things can come together to make a nice mm -hmm. little package of run your own business mm -hmm. or run your own daycare mm -hmm. or run your own child care um, preschool mm -hmm. type program. Um, what used to happen in Vermont, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you know better than I am, was that there were kind of established schools and then there are preschools and daycare centers and then there were a whole bunch of home providers who were licensed but not necessarily credentialed. Mm. So you didn't necessarily have to have the gamut of of experiences that you could have and Vermont several years ago now went first to the star system and I think mm -hmm. the star system has yep. gone by the wayside and nope, something nope, else no still there's just, still five yep, stars, stars yep. so anyway um, and that drive was to offer high quality child care mm -hmm. to every child mm -hmm. um, and with the idea of publicly funded preschool mm -hmm. um, that expanded e even more. And I think um, I think the important thing for us as the people who are, um, for, for us at the Tech Center, as people who are educating older students to go out into the workforce, mm -hmm. is that if, if we do our job right at, in the early childhood area, they'll do their job right and we'll get students who are more prepared at mm, school. Mm -hmm. And by more prepared, I mean having that time to play and explore and mm -hmm. learn and develop the language and develop the social emotional skills mm -hmm. um, and do all of those really rich activities. Um, you know, the idea of you're gonna teach them to color in the lines and you're gonna teach them empathy and all of those things, really doesn't happen in preschool, but the foundation is mm -hmm. all laid in preschool. Mm -hmm. um, and those foundations are really important to build mm -hmm. the future student on. And so our goal is, um, is to make sure that we, we instill those, that learning into people who are gonna mm -hmm. carry us forward. Mm -hmm. And when I think about our early childhood ed program, Thank goodness I'm beyond the age that I'm going to have babies. But um, <laughs> I am. I I look at early childhood ed, and I look at the LNA program and the the um, biomedical program, mm -hmm. and I think about the fact that these are the people who take care of our youngest and our most vulnerable yes. people. Yep. Um, so kind of our youngest and our oldest, who are our most vulnerable, and. Um, one of the things I like about the idea of our movement class is bringing those two mm -hmm. groups potentially mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. um, and hopefully developing really rich experiences mm -hmm. for both groups, mm -hmm. but also the fact that um, the, the brain of a small child between birth and six just grows mm -hmm. 
astronomically mm -hmm. in what it can do. Mm -hmm. And so if we can do that mm -hmm. for our, our little kids, if we can support that rich environment, support mm -hmm. that learning by teaching our older students, why wouldn't we do that? Right. right. Um, yeah. It's beneficial to everybody. Right. And, and there simply aren't enough mm -hmm. child care slots. Right. There just aren't. Right. And so, and we can't, so right, 90% of the brain is developed by age five. Before yeah. Before they ever even get to kindergarten. And, yeah. we, and yet, it's not a public good. I mean, we have 10 yeah, right. hours um, right. of public pre-K for 35 weeks a year yeah. because, you know, that's the only time learning happens. Right. Um, but, right. <laughs> just, um, yeah. But, you know, how important that foundation is to be mm -hmm. successful in kindergarten and beyond if you don't get it right. I mean, not that right. it's like you're, it's all done, but, but that it's really critically important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the reasons people don't go into early childhood or, frankly, into um, being an mm -hmm. LNA or caring for our most vulnerable, mm -hmm. whether they're mm -hmm. our youngest or oldest, is because we don't pay people very well That's in this true. field. Um, and, I, you know, I think that that can be discouraging. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm curious, Emily, when you thought about what you wanted to do was pay, how did you juggle that um, in your mind? So at first I was just, you know, I don't, I don't mind, I'm still young, I don't mm. really need to think about things like that. Um, in the future it's definitely a little stressful to mm -hmm. think about the field in general and just um, the amount of money that we should be making that we don't. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely a little scary looking into the future mm -hmm. and just, I mean, we give so much of our time, so much of ourselves, and it's all very much worth it, but it would nice be nice to have a little, mm -hmm. you know, compensation for that time and energy, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think the average wage for um, somebody in early education in, in Vermont might be like 11.32 an hour or something, which is, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, right. you just can't make a living on right. that. So you can't pay rent, and especially rent in Brattleboro, right. if you can even find a place to rent, so. I think it, it's a big barrier to people it's, getting into the field. It's huge, and I think um, one of the things I think we can do within our community, and I know Winston Prouty and and lots of others within the community do, is advocating at mm -hmm. the legislative yes. level to push that mm -hmm. pay scale forward. Mm -hmm. And um, what they w the way they need to start looking at it is that. Um, these kids that are now um, two or three mm -hmm. are going to be able, are going to be taking care of many of us <laughs> as we get older. And do you want them to have that rich early childhood foundation <laughs> to build on? Mm -hmm. And if you value that, because you know that when you hit the nursing home and they're taking care of you, <laughs> um, <laughs> you want them to have that. Right. Um, and you want them to have empathy and have developed those foundational skills. So if we can build with the legislature that understanding of how important mm -hmm. this period of time is for kids, um, I think we can move funding forward. But um, it's, it is going to have to become a government issue because families simply cannot afford to pay right. yes. for for what it really costs no. to provide high quality right. child care. That is absolutely right. And there's so, so uh, you know, and we've, we've covered a lot of this, like how many complicating variables there are. So right. the cost of care, the quality of care, if you want high quality care, you need training, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get compensated. So how you know you want to? You brought up the point of like let's right. make sure our students don't have as much debt. So dual enrollment, that's mm -hmm. great. And like, but that's a really complicated puzzle, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. and that's part of what makes it so challenging for people to know even where to start. And I think we just right. have to start somewhere. And so that's why right. I think this um, it's so exciting to me that it, within two years of something going away at the Career Center, we're able to be like, no, wait, we, we have to readjust. This is important. And I think mm -hmm. that message can really, that's a kind of advocacy too. Like when, right. you know, if another Career Center theoretically decides it's gonna shut its program, which I'm hearing a rumor about, like somewhere in, else in mm -hmm. Vermont, we can say, wait a minute, look at this, and mm -hmm. this is what we're doing, so. Right. And in the long term, is that really gonna serve your community well? No, right. And the reality is no, right. not in Vermont, yeah. it's not. And it's not, um, so it's not that we need to change the early education system, mm -hmm. it's that we need to change the funding system. Right. Right. And that, um, that 
lack of awareness, that lack of sy funding system mm -hmm. is definitely impacting mm -hmm. our youngest people and our families. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as yeah. Vermont talks all the time about wanting to attract more families and younger population, they that, absolutely get to deal with that, that is piece. Right. I, and I feel like that's where, and again, the Child Care Council Coalition, we've been talking about how do you make the argument? And we heard actually Building Bright Futures, so we have a local early childhood council. Mm -hmm. um, we had a meeting within the past couple of weeks. Some legislators came. Mm -hmm. It was our December legislative forum. And what we hear from legislators is, I think our delegation is actually remarkable. Um, they mm -hmm. understand early childhood, they understand the complex issues, they understand how it's tied to school, it's great. And what they tell us is their colleagues in the Senate and the House are sort of like, why should we care? Because they're older, they don't have kids anymore, they say things like, my kids are fine, they didn't, you know, they didn't mm -hmm. have a system, or my spouse stayed home like well good luck with that that's not realistic anymore so there is a real lack of understanding so the way how do we make the argument like who's going to be taking care of you or um you know if you want a thriving state with young people mm -hmm. coming in this is a piece of infrastructure it's like broadband yeah <laughs> you better have some early childhood um you know early childhood education and child care slots if you really want people to and, come. So. and they've got to be truly high quality yes um yeah. the idea that that we are going to get people to come here and and pay the amount it costs to to live here and not have high quality mm -hmm. child care is a mm -hmm. fallacy mm -hmm. it's not going to work yes yes that's true i think um you know the there are a lot of pressures um to and increase quality um which puts a um I think makes some people who've been in the field for a long time, like somebody mm -hmm. who might be great and actually have a high quality program but doesn't mm -hmm. have college degrees is sort of going right. to get pushed out. I mean, I think that, and I, it's just going to happen, but I, um, so it's sort of how do we make the transition respectfully? And mm -hmm. Emily, I'm wondering, were you able to take advantage of some dual enrollment credits? So like, did you end up not having too much of a debt load in terms of getting a degree yes you don't have to answer it it's too personal <laughs> it's like. so I took about four early childhood education courses at the Career Center and I also took some dual enrollment classes mm -hmm. through the high school as mm -hmm. well and so it really helped me move towards my associate's degree mm -hmm. and I went to the Community College of Vermont mm -hmm. and through that I was actually able to take some additional courses that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to take oh, wow. because I needed to fill the spot with something that I had already done in high school. Uh -huh. So that oh, was, great. yes. So you sort of had a more uh, broader choice of things to take. Right, uh -huh. yes. That's great, that's a good, a good um, outcome, it yes. sounds like. I, I know this is hard to believe, but we are almost out of time. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And um, we will really look forward to hearing about how the program goes. And Emily, maybe you will even have somebody in the up and coming class in your program that you get yes. to mentor, which I think would be really cool. I hope so. so. That's great. Great. So, so thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you.